Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. My name is Cal Evans and I'm your host. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of PHP or a related topic. Lightning Talks are a great Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for longtime speakers to test drive new talk ideas. Right now, we had Matt Stoffer. Tonight he'll be talking about how to convert a Laravel application from version 4 to version 5. Make sure after your talk, you visit Joined In and leave Matt some feedback. Okay, Matt, let's make you the presenter. All right, and we're going to talk about upgrading a Laravel 4 application to Laravel 5. And anytime you're giving a talk, you want to talk about wherefore art thou giving this talk. So major framework version upgrades always include a little bit of work. And I actually was listening to a ThoughtBot podcast where they talked about a Rails 2 to 3 upgrade, large application, two developers took a month. So we're going to do it in eight minutes. <laughs> But, but actually, so small apps I've been able to do in a couple hours, and larger apps tend to take about a day. So we're doing pretty well here relatively, but it's not just a drag and drop process. So today's guinea pig is going to be SaveMyProposals.com, which is a pretty simple um, software as a service based on Laravel 4. It's open source, and you can see everything on GitHub. Um, actually, if you check it out later, you can go to GitHub.com slash Matt Stauffer slash SaveMyProposals, and you can actually see the commit when I originally tried my first Laravel 5 conversion, and you can see the whole diff there. Two caveats. First caveat, do the minimum viable upgrade. A lot of people, when they do this upgrade, they both want to upgrade the, the framework components, but they also want to take advantage of all the new cool stuff. If you want to stay sane, do the minimum, commit it, make sure it works, and then upgrade later, use new syntaxes, new features, and all that kind of stuff. And another caveat, if you do this upgrade the way we're talking about it here, and you do git commits along the way, which I'd recommend, you're going to lose the consistency of your files, because git won't know what happened. So before you do your final merge in, do a git squash at the end, and then it'll see that they've just moved around a little bit. So this is a little bit of a weird way to do it, and a lot of people would say, well, why don't I just go into composer.json and update the, uh, the Illuminate framework or the, the Laravel framework requirement from 4.2 to 5.0. I'm going to tell you it's possible, but it's not worth the work. Even though this seems complicated, it's a lot simpler in the end. So branch your app. So you go into your Save My Proposals original site, you check out B, Laravel 5 upgrade, and nuke it. Delete everything. What this terminal lines here, what they really mean is just delete every file except for the Git folder. So now we have a completely blank folder. Uh, we can git commit, and then we want to pull in Laravel 5 completely fresh as if this were a brand new site. There's a couple ways to do that, but the easiest one is just to add Laravel's remote, fetch it in, merge the master branch, squash it, and then you've got a commit here that literally just deleted everything. It says this if it were entirely fresh Laravel 5 install. And then in a parallel directory somewhere else, you want to bring in Save My Proposals or bring in your site as a clone that we're going to be copying stuff over. So what we did here was we just said, give me a clone of that exact same site, a parallel to it, um, and you can see if we you know, list, we basically got two versions of it, one with this new branch and one with the old site. And now what we're going to start to do is get this site set up to copy the stuff over. So first of all, if you in your PHP domain um, have a top level namespace, for example, every one of your uh, PHP classes is save my proposals slash something, you're going to teach Laravel what that namespace is. So if you run PHP artisan app colon name and then your namespace have save my proposals, it takes all the default files that are already there, but also anything you generate in the future, and it just replaces app with the name of your thing. So from app HTTP controllers to save my proposals HTTP controllers. The next thing is you want to migrate your composer dependencies. Your temptation may be to take your old composer JSON and update a few things in it and port it over, but there's some changes to the syntax of what particular things uh, in composer that Laravel 5 is using. So the better option is actually to take the new composer JSON and just copy and paste your new dependencies in. And this might actually give you the opportunity to think a little bit about what they are, which versions they are. Um, you run composer update and then pray, um, but hopefully everything is going to pull in uh, well. And then you actually pull in, pull in your primary domain folder. So we're kind of assuming that most folks will have a primary place where that, for example, all the, the classes underneath Save My Proposals will live, whether it's in slash source or slash app slash Save My Proposals, whatever, move those directly flat into the app folder. So just alongside the default stuff, console, commands, HTTP controllers, your domain logic is going to live right in there, and all of that will be PSR4 autoloaded as whatever your top-level app namespace is. 
the next step, you want to move over your framework specific code. So this is all the code that is your code that is very Laravel specific. So controllers, commands, all that kind of stuff. And you'll see that there's going to be almost exactly the same thing over and over. Basically just the directory structure changed a little bit. So some of the stuff that's very tied to the HTTP stack or to the console stack, basically the call through the um, through the framework, a lot of those moved into app. And a lot of the resources that are not necessarily framework tied actually moved out of app into the top level domain um, uh, structure. So move your commands from app slash commands to app slash console commands. Move your controllers from app slash controllers to app slash HTTP controllers. Database from app database to database, because again, that's kind of a, a little bit less laravel -y. Move your filters, so these are kind of your route filters from app filters into the service provider. And one thing you'll notice in Laravel 5 is a lot more things have been moved into service providers. Language files from app lang to resources lang. If you're using app models still, uh, we're moving kind of away from that, but if you are, that's fine. Just add it to the Composer JSON class map autoloader and it'll automatically pull all those models in. Move your routes from app routes to app HTTP routes. And note that all the built-in filters have moved from being before and after filters to being middleware, so you can just change the syntax there. Move any bindings that you registered in Start Global into App Service Provider at Register, and note that again, these things should probably be starting to be moved into their own service providers. We want to move away from procedural bindings, just kind of one after the other after the other in some global file, and move them into group uh, service providers. And then move your tests from App Test to Test. The next step is move your configuration. So there have been some pretty significant changes the way configuration works. Thankfully, it actually simplifies everything. So first of all, you shift your mentality. We don't have config slash local, config slash production, any of that kind of stuff. There's a single flat configuration structure, and anything that should change from environment to environment should be defined with environment variables. And we're no longer using .env.php, as you can see up in the top right here. We're now using .n, which is a php.n, which is an existing library that's not Laravel specific. Um, and you can see the syntax of it right there. So first of all, you, any keys that you had set up in .env.php, you want to move them into .env.example. And this should exist in every single one of your sites to provide basically a, a template for what your .env file should look like. And then once that is good, you commit it, and then copy your .env.example file to .env, which is going to be git ignored, and that's for this particular environment, and then actually put the right values in there. And you want to take a look at some of the magic ones that are there. App underscore env now defines which environment you're in, App debug is a Boolean for whether or not we're debugging, all this kind of stuff. Step nine, move any loose files back in. Readme.md, Travis.yaml, Scrutinizer.yaml, bring them all back in. Step 10, if you're using Laravel authentication, the easiest way to update it is honestly just to take the new one and just any customization you've made, bring it in. But if you need to, there's basically a list of a whole bunch of changes to basically namespacing and a couple imports. Uh, just go check the, the upgrade documentation and then it's all listed step by step there. Step 11, you want to upgrade your blade echo syntax. So the default blade echo syntax in Laravel form 4 was the double squiggly brace, and that still should be the default, but the one thing to note is that that now escapes your echoes. So if you have anywhere where you're actually expecting it to not escape HTML, you're going to need to new, you need, use this new one, which is the squiggly and then the two bangs. And if you absolutely can't change it, if you just have so many that you can't deal with it, you could change what tags blade is looking for, but I promise you that if at all possible, it's easier to use the new syntax. It's a lot safer, and it doesn't take that much work. Step 12, we just want to notify Laravel, hey, you know, we are a Laravel 5 app, but we're using it the old way, which means we're not namespacing our controllers and a few other things. And this is really the main one here. You want to go into the route service provider, and you want to say the namespace for controllers is null. And it'll default to app slash HTTP slash controllers, and you want to say it's null. And additionally, you're going to need to composer class map autoload the controllers and commands directories, just like we did the models directory earlier. That just wants to bring them all in without relying on PSR4 and, or PSR0. Move your public directory over. You've probably got assets and stuff in there. Basically, just cop delete everything out of the new one except index.php and copy all your assets over. Uh, update your application code. Anywhere it's relying directly on you know, the API for uh, Laravel, there's only a few changes. Uh, soft deleting trait is now soft deletes. Eloquent Remember no longer exists. You have to manage your own caching. Paginator Links was renamed to Paginator Render. And Feenstock, if you're using it, um, is 3.0 instead of 2.1. And if there's any other things you have any issues with or you think the API might have changed, again, just check out the upgrade guide. But there's very, very few breaking API changes. 
Step 15, CSRF, um, cross-site request forgery, uh, is protection is turned on by default in Laravel 5, which means every route that could modify anything, which is post or delete or whatever else, now is automatically being protected against this, which means any forms you're submitting that don't have a CSRF token are all of a sudden going to give you some kind of invalid token error. So the way to fix that is, one, disable the CSRF middleware you know, everywhere, an app HTTP kernel, which means it'll just go back to functioning the way it used to be, or go to all your forms and set the form field of underscore token to be the value of the function CSRF token. Also, if you want to be able to turn it on and off manually on particular routes, you can just move that middleware from the global middleware in app HTTP kernel to the route specific middleware, which is also in there, and then you can turn it on and off on different routes. Uh, step 16, the HTML and forms library, um, if you use them, they've been pulled out of the core and moved out to Laravel Collective. Um, so you would just basically go over to github.com slash Laravel Collective and just follow the instructions there for how to pull them into Laravel 5 app. They function exactly the same as they used to. You just have to do an extra step to pull them in. Um, if you relied on Whoops uh, for debugging, um, it's gone, but it's very easy to bring it back. and their best resources, just this blog post I wrote, it's really quick to bring it back in. Um, and finally, there's an upgrade guide um, that I, I wrote the original one of it, but a lot of people in the community have added to it since. Uh, it's a really fantastic guide that walks you step by step with a much more nuance into all the pieces that we've dealt with here. Um, and whenever anybody notices that there might be some tiny little API breaking change that we didn't notice here, they'll just throw it in there. But if you read through the guide, it's a couple pages long. And again, the vast majority of the issues folks had when they were upgrading were not upgrading their applications, it was upgrading their packages. So unless you're a Laravel specific package author, you're not going to have a lot of trouble here. And it might be a little bit of manual work to change all your blade syntax over or something like that. But the, the key pieces are actually pretty simple. So once you've done all that, you probably have a series of git commits because if you're like me, you're paranoid and you've been git, git committing every step along the way. Like I said, in order to not break the history of your files, once you're done with that, just do a git squash. And if you don't know that, I didn't have the link here, but go to my blog. I've also got a thing about how to do git rebase squash. And you basically take all the commits since from Laravel for to Laravel 5, you smush them together into one, and then Git sees it as just a whole bunch of files moving with a few lines changing versus this massive upheaval like it felt like when we are doing it here. So that's it. I'm at Stauffer Matt on Twitter. MattStauffer.co is where my blog is, and I also podcast, like we mentioned earlier, I podcast on the 5-Minute Geek Show and Laravel Podcast. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate that. That was a uh, wonderful talk. Thank you. Let's swap over to my screen. Okay. Thank you for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you would like to give a Lightning Talk, please email joe at joe at nomadphp.com. And while you're at it, please go ahead and visit Joined In and leave Matt some feedback. There's a place for you to give him a rating and some feedback. Um, no matter what the rating you give, please make sure you leave some comment in the um, field. Tell him what he did right and what he can do better. 